In this section, we are going to discuss about troubleshooting your trunk links. Like take an example, you have a user connected here in my LAN and this user want to communicate with a server or it can be another device which is on a different switch. In our previous section, if you remember, we did the same thing, but we did only troubleshooting where a source and destination are on the same switch. Now in case if you have a user on a different switch, then what are the things we need to keep in mind when doing the troubleshooting? Let's try to see them. And if you remember, we already discussed the troubleshooting the VLAN issues. So we might also see these things uh, in this section. Also, we'll see the devices must be on the same VLAN. Let us try to figure out what are the possible things we need to keep in mind when we are troubleshooting the VLANs. So I got a simple diagram here, which is going to show you like this is the exact scenario which I'll be using here for verifying my troubleshooting. So here my requirement is the user connecting on 192.168.1.1 here somewhere is trying to access a device 192.168.1.5 and there is no communication happening between these two things. Like if you remember in our previous sections in the VLAN configurations we have seen in order to have a proper communication both the ports must be on the same VLAN. So the first thing anyway, I had to check the physical connections and I have verified all the physical connections. As of now, they are working fine. The connection between the switches is working fine and the connection to the end devices are also working fine and both the devices are powered on. So we are not getting into physical connectivity part right now because I'm assuming that it is perfect. So now the next thing, what we need to do is we need to make sure that both the devices ports must be on the same VLAN. That's the next thing we need to check. So the port connecting here, which is port number one connecting on switch one and port number one connecting on switch two, they must be configured on the same VLAN. So that's the first thing we need to keep in mind. If they are not on the same VLAN, then they will never communicate. Apart from that, they should be on the same logical network means the IP addressing must be on the same network. So as of now, they are using the same network. So assuming that they are in the same network, we really understand that, okay, they are in the same network and they are same VLAN. So assume that this part is not a problem. So we also verified that they are on the same VLAN. Also, they are on the same network. Practically, we'll verify that. Now, next thing, what we need to keep in check. Okay, so now if you want to communicate from here, there is a link connecting between the switches. Now, we need to ensure that this link must be configured as a trunk link. Okay, because maybe I'm using multiple VLANs. I'm using VLAN 10, VLAN 20, VLAN 30. In case if you're using multiple VLANs, then the trunk link is mandatory because a two same VLAN users, VLAN 10 and VLAN 10, if they want to communicate between them, if they're on different switches, then there must be a trunk link configured in between them, which means we need to ensure that your trunking must be perfect. Okay, so that's what we are going to see in this video. We are going to see what are the possible reasons or what can affect my trunk configuration uh, without uh, it, what exactly will not allow my traffic to go from if there is a misconfiguration. Okay, the first thing, there should be a trunk link configured. Okay, so the first thing I really suggest you to check is the trunking options. Like here, I listed out some of the options here. So here you can see the first thing I'm going to check is the trunk link configured or not. Okay, is the link, whatever you're connecting between the two switches. So this link, is it configured with trunking or not? So this link must be configured as a trunking and these two ports must be on the same VLAN. So this is our basic requirement which you have to satisfy in order to have a communication. Now we might do the trunking like I can say that trunking is configured and they're on the same VLAN. Still any misconfiguration inside your trunking will also affect your communication between these devices. Let us see. I'm assuming that the trunking is configured. Now the next thing we need to check is the trunking modes. If you remember, we discussed some DTP modes. So if you have a misconfiguration of these modes, DTP modes, it can still affect the communication between your devices. Like, uh, like if I take an example in our switches, like we have seen. So if you remember, we have some multiple DTP options like either you can manually configure the trunk by using a switchboard mode trunk command, 
or we can manually configure it as access or we can leave to DTP to auto negotiation. So now we should know the appropriate combination which are going to work to make the link up. So I'm connecting two switches and between these two switches, I'm connecting port number 24 and on both the sides, either I, one side I should use desirable and the opposite side must be either auto or desirable. Okay. Or one side I can configure trunk and the other side it can be trunk, it can be auto or it can be desirable also works. Even you can configure the other side as a trunk. But in case if you configure one side as a trunk or maybe other opposite side if you configure access, this is not going to work. So you have to know the exact combinations, which combinations will actually make your link to become a trunk link. So that is a very important thing. We have discussed much more in detail about the DTP in a separate video. If you remember, I suggest you, if you don't have a good understanding on this DTP, you can just go through with that video and to have a better understanding of these combinations, like which link will make this link as a trunk link, which combinations will make this link as a trunk and which combinations will not make this link as a trunk link okay so if you have a misconfigurations or wrong configurations of these DTP options it will again affect your communication or it will affect your trunk link and it will avoid the link becoming a trunk mode so or both the sides of the link are in a correct trunking mode that is one thing I suggest and we can verify with a command called show interface f0 by 20 switch port command and you can verify that so if you realize that both the sides it is configured as a trunk or might be one side is trunk other side auto still is going to work whatever the configurations and if you realize the trunk commands are perfect and this trunking modes is not the reason okay so next thing we need to check the trunking encapsulation if one side of the switch you configure isl encapsulation and the other side is running dot one q mismatch of encapsulations on both the sides will also affect your trunk link your trunk link may not work and it will not be able to forward the traffic uh, the vlan traffic between the switches so that is the next thing we need to verify and to verify that either we can use show interface trunk command or still we can use this command as well for here also we can verify that so next thing so we'll see these things practically like i said i have a pre-configured lab where already i have inserted some of the issues where we'll be verifying all these things so before that let us quickly summarize these things this the first thing trunking must be configured and if you're using dtp you should have a proper combination of dtp and the next thing encapsulation mismatch or there may be a problem with a native vlan mismatch native vlan means by default uh, any traffic comes from here if the link if there is no trunking it will send as a native vlan traffic so native vlan on both the sides by default it will take the native vlan as one on both the sides and in case one side you configure one as a native vlan if the other side there is a mismatch of native vlan you will see this message you can see cdp message native vlan mismatch it has been discovered you'll see this console message on your screen whenever these things happens so in that case also the trunk link will not be able to forward the traffic and then so you can verify this with show interface trunk command or even we can verify with show interface f0 by 20 switch port commands now after that and once we confirm that this whatever we discussed up to now they are perfect there's no problem on this side so there might be a problem with vlan permitted on both the sides so by default we have an option called allowed vlan on the trunk links so if you remember we did these concepts in our trunking concepts the allowed VLAN like if this switch is allowing the VLAN 10 and VLAN 20 only and this side it is allowing all the VLANs. So mismatch of allowed VLAN configuration also will affect your trunk link. Uh, it will really affect your communication also. So you have to make sure that the permitted VLANs on both the sides must be same. So either you make them both the sides all all or the solution is you make 10 20 on both the sides. So whatever the solution you want to go, you can go as per your requirement, but you have to make sure that both the trunk links allowing the VLAN must be on the same side. So we have this troubleshooting as well. We'll see that. Okay, then you have to check whether you are connecting the appropriate trunking or not. Sometimes we are supposed to uh, configure port number 24 on both the sides. We might be connecting on a different port and we are trying to 
send the traffic. So finally, you have to verify your VTP configuration. Sometimes if you're using VTP, you just check with the VTP as well. Troubleshooting VTP will see separately. So this is something what we are not verifying here.